Hello everyone, I'm Vikram P. Maduri here. Welcome to JH Soft Tech. And in this session, we'll discuss a couple of frequently asked questions in SAP ABAP interviews. And this would also help you for the certification and also to upgrade your skills or refresh your existing skills on SAP uh, ABAP module pool programming. It can, module pool programming is also called as plain programming. It can, it's also called as dialogue programming, dynamic programming, dynpro. So all are the names for the single concept that's called module pool programming. Is the set parameter statement to be issued in process before output or process after input module and why? So the set parameter needs to be mentioned in the process after input and the value must be input into the fields first before it can be placed in the buffer. So the main reason is that it has to be first given an input and then only it can be processed further. Now, where does the get parameter statement get its values? Which field gets populated with the new field? From the buffer. It gets from the from the buffer. The get parameter statement gets its value from the buffer. Where can the set cursor command be executed? What is its effect? In the process before output. To position the cursor in a particular field after the screen is displayed, we'll be using the set cursor command. Okay, so I repeat set cursor is used in the process before output and it to it, it is positioned in the cursor in a particular field after the screen is displayed. What are the match codes and how do they affect the screen field? Where are they specified in the online program? So in the properties window of the field. So we can give the match code in the properties window of the field. So you get it in the right side of your a screen right so when you double click on a particular field you get the right side window so in that we'll have the properties window in that you'll have the match code what is the effect of of an uh, on chain request command in in your flow logic so when value of any field be fields between the chain and chain is attempted to change uh, it basically has a So in the statements chain and n chain in the Dynpro flow logic defines the processing chains. The statements field and module can be executed between chain and n chain. Field and modules. So the, the statements between chain and n chain form a process chain. It's a, it's a complete process chain. So let's understand this with an example because this concept is extremely important for us. It's asked in almost every interview uh, when we when they touch base with the module pool programming concept. So we have, let's say we have in the process after input we have a we have a scenario wherein we have we are writing the fields input one, and then we are writing module validate underscore input underscore one. Now, in the above example, if the validation fails in validate underscore input underscore one, then input one will be ready for input. But if you want it, if the if you want the validation in validate underscore input underscore one, and if it's failed, then input one, input two, input three should come ready for input. Then we have to write the following. So what happens here is like if the if the validation is on a single field, that's the scenario. But if it's like you know in on on a multiple fields, then we can write something like chain and chain between chain and chain. We have the field input one, input two, input three, and then we have the validate underscore input underscore one. So for multiple values. Now what is the difference between the long form and the short form of making database changes? So the long form is like you know update Mara and set a BRGW. Okay. So now here we have a very many and is equal to MSU. So this is a standard Oracle statement. Basically we have it. But in short form, a Mara hyphen MAT and is equals to MAT1. And Mara hyphen BRG brgw is equals to zero so where we are writing we are actually referring to the table name with the field name so then we have modify mark so this is an sap defined statement to modify the table it is more secure and consistent so we we basically go for this short form now what is the advantage using the sap long form over the short form the database changes so it might be fast okay the effect might be fast that's, that's the only thing so can um, can where clause be used when updating database entries yes we can use where clause when you are updating the data into the database tables what is the logic unit logical unit of work how, will, how does it work logical unit of work is a block of memory area where database contents a store contents are restored and uh, contents are restored and manipulated 
okay and for every sap application logical unit of work is automatically created for database communications beside the beside this we have a sap logical unit of works also will be there and what function is performed by the commit work command it's a very important question when you perform commit all the logic logical units of works work will will be will be reflected to the database now its work will be reflected into the database when we say commit work a logical unit of work can be created in sc36 transaction so uh, we have already existing standard logical unit of works if you have to update the data through logical unit of, of, of work it it might consist of multiple tables and if you want to get the data updated into all the tables and in, instantly then it needs to be attached to um, connected with the logical unit of work and if all the changes have to be reflected in the logical unit of work you need to assign the commit work now why is it so important for a programmer to check the lock entries to find out if lock if record is locked and also to maintain data integrity so it's it's very important the most important thing is data integrity now how can you find a lock entry for a database table so the function model nq and the lock object name checks whether a lock uh, was triggered or the same object for the same object otherwise an exception foreign underscore lock is carried out so if the if the object is not locked the function module sets the lock what steps are necessary to set a lock on a record within a database table so execute call function statement so we have a call function we have the nq and in the in the in the in the brackets in the in the in the angular brackets we need to write the lock object name and you need to call it so exporting exceptions and if we can check the size of our three values now how do you unlock the entry why is this necessary so if you want to unlock the entry then you have to go for the you know call function statement and then you have to write the dq and the lock object name so dq and uh, uh, lock object name if you mention and we call it call function then it will it will uh, it will enable us to unlock a particular entry now what is the difference between call screen and set screen and leave screen so set screen statement sets or rewrites the following follow up screen leave screen executes the screen number currently in the follow screen field call screen interrupts the processing of the current screen to call a new screen or a chain of screens processing of the current screen is resumed directly after the call now after a call screen command where does the processing return after the screen has been executed so it returns the processing of the call screen calling screen which is the more similar to a call with return the set screen or a call screen the call screen is more similar to a return now what function is performed by the set screen zero command returns to the original screen where must you place the set pf status command in your online program so place it in the process before output module of the screen why is it good idea to clear ok underscore code field after deciding which action to be taken care so you need to clear the ok code to avoid sending a screen that already has a function code how do you specify that a function is an exit type command so by specifying function type as e for the push buttons or menu op or options in the screen painter or the menu painter now what is the purpose of at exit command usually there are many ways to leave a screen and you know back you can use a back uh, back command or back push button exit or cancel this command will perform termination logic for all functions of type e that's the reason we use the at exit command so what are the screen groups a group of screen fields such as radio buttons or check boxes now what is the correct syntax of dynamically modifying a large number of screen fields so you can write this module in, in, in this is a module name modify underscore screen underscore output is a module name inside that you need to write loop at screen and if screen hyphen group is equals to 3d and uh, this group one and this is the gr1 is a group name screen hyphen input is equals to 3d1 end it so if screen and screen hyphen name is equals to 3d and uh, the tab table table field name whatever it might be you need to write that screen active 3d and end it so a modify screen and loop and loop so what is the name of the internal table that stores the screen information screen what is the purpose of the modify command when performing the dynamic screen modifications after you activate or deactivate the field attributes 
by assigning them to 1 or 0. You save the modifications via mo modify screen command. Direction for the use of checkbox and radio buttons in the screen painter. So creating radio button and checkboxes on the screen, go to the full screen editor. So place an underscore at the point where you want to place the field. Define the name of the field using field attributes. Place the cursor on the field and press graphic element. Then press radio buttons or checkboxes depending on the which graphic element you want. Then you, you, then you group related uh, checkboxes and radio boxes. What are the user exits and transactions? Generally user exits are the forms defined within SAP standard code and usually starting with user exits. These predefined areas in the code allow programmers to insert custom defined code into the standard processing of a transaction. So it allows res resorting of the batch sequence in the VA01 batch processing. There are many specific examples if you are insert interested. But usually you, you, your user exits are searched for when a specific use is being analyzed. So what happens if you enter 0 in the next screen attribute? So it does not go to any other screen and it moves back one level. However, you can control this in runtime using set screen command. So you can go for set screen and you can give the number name of the name of the number of the screen. How do you modify the attributes of a screen field at a runtime? So we loop through the fields of a screen. So when you when you find the name of a screen field, you want to modify set attributes or the field field and use modify screen to update the attributes. So you can find attributes in the internal table screen. This loop makes some of the screen fields invisible uh, in the selection screen. So at selection screen output is what you can use. So there's a command here. So how to leave DynePro although required entry not made. So in the menu painter function attributes for the button set function type to exit command. In the process after input we have call method call module that leaves a screen before user underscore command and execute it. Then we have the module return exit at exit command and module user underscore command. This is the code that we have. So calling a report from a DynePro. There are two ways to do this you can call a report from a DynePro in a two ways. One is use leave to list list hyphen processing if you want to do it in a module boot program. You will not be able to use it in the selection screen. Use the submit statement to start a separate report from your DynePro. Anyone who have idea on how to know the selected selected value of runtime. Okay. Then how can how can we get the table control attribute selected views and all these things we need to understand this there's no difference on the other row which is not selected so basically for a calling a program we can just write this list processing leave to list process okay here if f4 help calling it from a programming program and limiting values so to avoid the standard f4 help to be shown Insert the event process on value request. Process on value request in the program and uh, add a field. So process on value request and we have the call function module f4 if underscore field underscore value request. This is a function model which we need to call there for the f4 help. This is an example here wherein we have the you know, process after input. In the process after input, we'll be writing this process on value request and then field name and uh, module f4 underscore help. This is a module module name and we have to call this f4 help inside the module. So this is what we have this f4 if underscore field underscore value underscore request which is under this module inside that module. So what can what you can do with transaction variables insert default values into fields change the ready for input status for fields hide various screen elements menu functions or entire screens adjust table control settings so transaction variants can only be used with the dialog transactions so how to create a transaction variant we can use the sht0 so in the field transaction on sht0 enter the transaction in a you know on on code for the screen you want to modify so in the 
field variant on SHT0, enter the name you want to give the transaction variant. So press create. Now the screen for the transaction is shown and you can enter default values in the fields of the screen. Press enter. Now screen that enables you to make further customizing, hide output only invisible mandatory. So if the screen fields is shown. So after you have finished customizing the screen, press enter and to go to the next screen or uh, exit to save the transaction variant. How to find user exits? So this is the process that we are going to discuss in the next coming session. So these are the things that we have discussed on the module two program and related to, you know, you, uh, you know, FAQs related to user exits and baddies, I'm going to display, uh, discuss in the next session. And if you haven't yet subscribed, do su consider subscribing so that you will get a lot of information, a uh, valid information, and uh, you keep, I'll keep sharing you all, all my knowledge. Uh, and uh, if at all, if you're looking out for trainings, you can contact us at training at And if you're looking out for jobs, you can contact us at jobs at Thank you. Have a great day.